I remember when I told you that in Godzilla 1954, Godzilla was a representation of what will happen if humanity um, misuses the the weapons of what, the nuclear weapons. Remember when I told you that? Well, it turns out the company behind Godzilla thought it wasn't enough, and they wanted to make a sequel. And that sequel was the re- was the turning point of wh- how Godzilla got his got his run in fighting monsters and kicking their ass. It's Godzilla, King of the Monsters. No, not the dub of the not the dubbing of the 1954 original, and no, not Godzilla, King of the Monsters that came out in 2019. I'm talking about the sequel to Godzilla, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, in 1956. And in that and that and that movie fell wait hold up is it called King of the Monsters? Is a dubbing called King of the Monsters or is the sequel called King of the Monsters? Oh no, it's Godzilla Strikes Again or Strikes Back. Oh yeah, Strikes Again. Oh no, Godzilla Raids Again. This oh no, no it came out in 1955. It felt unnecessary, you know. You already had the message clear to to us humans who watch the movie. Nuclear weapon bad. Uh, nuclear weapon bad. And if we keep using it, then uh, Godzilla will come out and destroy us all. And and this and this one, he had to fight like an ankylos like an ankylosaurus, and then he gets shocked on ice, and then he gets like bombarded with ice. So what? Like I'm sorry. If Godzilla, if Godzilla, all, we, all he was gonna do was gonna fight a monster, then why did he have to destroy him again, and only only for him to come back again? Like, what was the point of stopping in ice? Well, it turns out that Ishiro Honda, you know, he was like, well, I'm done. I'm done making uh, Godzilla films because the message was already clear on the first one. Why did I have to make this dumbass second one, where I already had to express the message on the first one? And then he made God, and then he made Godzilla versus King Kong, and then surely, and then surely his message, you know, was so in spite of him, right? Anyways, yeah, this movie was like I said, it was like the it was like the reason why Godzilla's fighting monsters, why he had to fight Astro Monster, Hibora, Hibora, Horror of the Deep, and King and King Kong, of course. But in context, let's just say, let's say it was 1955, 1954. You just finished watching Godzilla. It's the most harrowing, dark movie you've ever seen, and you've already understood the message, right? And then imagine one year later they start making a sequel, and you're like, oh, this is interesting. Well, I get, at least I will watch it. And you're like, and then after that, you would say, you say to yourself, huh? You're like, huh? What was the message to the second one again? And then you start watching more of the Godzilla movies that that have gone from, and then you start watching more and more Godzilla movies that are that have the title Godzilla versus Godzilla in the invasion of Astro Monster. You're like, what was the message the first one again? Like, like I I'm not like I'm not saying like, I love Godzilla movies, right? And then, like, and this is the reason why. So should I love it? Well. In context, no, I don't. But I'm kind of I'm kind of thankful this movie exists because without it, then we wouldn't have the long the long the long mass uh, the long ever growing franchise of Godzilla. In my opinion, six out of ten didn't need to happen, but I'm kind of glad it did because if it didn't, then um, we wouldn't have all these Godzilla movies. So yeah, this was a pretty short review, wasn't it?